Robinson. I am a solutions consultant with Beyond 20 and in this video I will be covering the application of a mergeable application in ShareWell that can be used to monitor and troubleshoot your email and event monitoring service within ShareWell. So this map is titled Beyond 20 Mail Monitor Log and if you go through the description it'll explain that this map provides a new lookup table object that lets you keep track of either ingoing or outgoing emails over the past couple of days. Right now it's limited to just anything that was sent or received within the last three days because you don't want to see in a tab, you know, here's the last 2,000 emails that have been sent out of a system. So to, to limit the kind of querying that's going on in the database, we currently have that set to just the past three days, so you only concern yourself with what's happening recently. Um, the way that this is going to function is it's going to actually keep track of the journal mail history records that are created either for incoming or outgoing mail. Something that may or may not be a surprise to you is that if you have an incoming email, it'll create a journal mail history record even if it fails to save a ticket. As long as you have that mail monitor set up to log a journal, it still gets saved in the system. And we'll go over later in this video how you can use that to find and troubleshoot the error messages associated with a failed email message when it's being processed. So I'm going to go ahead and finish applying this map. If you don't have this map, you can find it in the ShareWell Map Exchange, or you can find it on our website at beyond20.com uh, by going to the Map Factory page on our website. So I'm going to accept the terms of this map. Just keep moving forward. Uh, we do add a field onto the journal group leader. Uh, this is actually the email ID field from the journal mail history record. It's not available on the group leader, and we do actually need it to be on the group leader. So we move that up to the group leader as well. Um, by default, Sharewell Maps will automatically add in uh, any indexes for journals, so don't worry about these indexes being overwritten unless you have deleted one of them. And then here we can see that our map contains a logo, which is just our logo, which is being used for our business object, as well as an expression and a slight modification to journal alongside our business object. I'll go ahead and open this blueprint so that I can publish it. And then I'm going to publish. Um, for reference, the business object we add is right here. It's labeled B20 Mail History Tracking. And the only thing that we have on it, on our form, is just some instructions that say, use the tabs below to track journal mail history records being sent or received within the last three days. So I'm going to publish this, and then we'll go over how we can use this. Uh, really, it's going to be a very simple setup. All you'll need to do is create one record in the table, save the record, and then refresh. And once you do that, it'll reload the two relationships in the form arrangements, and you'll be able to see any emails that have been sent or received in the system recently. So now that my blueprint has been published, I'm going to open my rich client, and I already had it open at the time that I published, so I'm going to reload definitions. Then I'll go into table management, and I should see a B20 mail history tracking table. Now there's no records in here by default, so I'll need to create one. Once I've created that, I need to save it, and then I need to refresh. Once I do that, I can see that I had an email that was processed earlier today. Now this email did not create a ticket, and once I had processed this email, I was having trouble finding that ticket, it didn't get created, the email failed. And I, if I was a SaaS customer, for instance, or if I didn't have access to the email and event monitor logs, I wouldn't know why. So the purpose of this map is to let you troubleshoot what's going on with these emails when they get processed and 
one or all of the actions associated with that email and event monitoring block fail. To do that, you'll, sele you'll select your email, click the email button to bring up a compiled copy of the email. This actually loads from the Trebuchet mail table within Sherwell as opposed to just the journal mail history record, which is why it's important that we have a relationship going to journal so we can access this email button that only appears in form arrangements. Once you have this email details window open, you'll go down to the bottom left and select executed actions. And here you'll see the different uh, actions that are being taken by the email event monitor. So we can see it ran through the create new incident uh, step, but then when we got to save, it failed. And we can see here that our error message was the field incident customer ID must be filled in before the record can be saved. Now without this map, if I didn't have access to the email event monitoring logs, I'd have no way of finding this out. And you'd end up doing a lot of trial and error to figure out what your error really is with an email that's failing to process if you can't access the logs. So now that I know what my error message is, I can troubleshoot my email and event monitoring action and find out why my customer ID is not getting set before the record is saved. Now for this email, or for this video, I went with a very easy example of a very common problem when you're uh, running through an email and event monitor that causes this issue. So for me, it was as simple as I did not select a default customer to use. So now if I select a default customer, and I click OK, I will go ahead and open up my email. For this, I'm using a very simple Gmail account. Here's the test email that I sent earlier today that failed. Now I'm going to mark this as unread, and the email and event monitoring service is going to reprocess that email a second time, as if it's a new email. Once it does that, we should see it successfully create an incident within ShareWell. It's been processed now, and we'll be able to verify that that record exists in ShareWell. So now we have a second email in our list that's been processed. If I want to check on it, I can see that it was created, the incident was saved, and then it was added to a queue. So I can go and find that incident now. So if I go back to my home page, the latest ticket that we have here is a mail message from me at 1017. Our earlier email was never created because it had a failure. But this one, now that we've corrected our issue that we were able to find using this map, the incident has been created. If you have any questions about how to use this map or anything that you'd like to add in as far as feedback, feel free to send it out to us. You can find us on our YouTube channel at beyond20.com slash you can find us on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash beyond20llc. And you can also uh, contact us via our website at beyond20.com. Thank you and have a nice day.